Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Damanor and I am a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Damanor and I am a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. But I never really played a lot of Sonic games. However, I did start with the first game, Sonic the Hedgehog, for the Sega Genesis. Then, my next game was Sonic Advance, that was originally for the Sega Dreamcast, but I got the GameCube version. I also played Sonic Adventure for the Game Boy Advance, and Sonic Rush for the Nintendo DS. True story, I actually had the game case and the game card, but then I lost the, gun the game card somewhere, and uh, I just had the case for a long time. In fact, just recently, I just bought the game card from GameStop, so... And I'm currently playing it! I am actually really happy about that. <laughs> But there was one Sonic game that I was always interested in because of the whole hoopla around it. That game being Sonic CD for the Sega CD later ported to PC and was the introduction of fan favorite characters Metal Sonic and Amy Rose. I'm going to be playing the remastered version on Steam, which has been praised to the stars and heavens as the best Sonic game outright. However, I've been- wait, Sonic Mania is out. As the best Sonic game outright prior to Sonic Mania's release and or reveal. However, I've been noticing that a lot of people are starting to say that the game is not that good and or they're starting to hate it. But I decided to take a dip in the water ride that is Sonic CD on Steam. I studied the reviews that praise it to near perfection. I took in the opinions of those who are starting to not like the game. But I decided to give this game a shot. I decided to try it out and give you guys my honest opinion. So let us check out Sonic CD. Why don't we? <laughs> Let me just give you my answer and explain along the way. The truth is, I enjoyed this game, but uh, I think I enjoyed the game for the wrong reasons. Let us start from the beginning. The story is a planet called Little Planet is here. Eggman takes over. Sonic runs into Amy, who is a huge fan and believes in the heart of the cards. What? Sonic meets Metal Sonic, who steals Amy. Sonic saves Amy, and Sonic then stops Eggman's plan. There you go. Sonic can spin dash and spin attack. All the same things. But his spin dash now has two choices of what kind of spin dash you wish to use. The original Sonic CD spin dash or Sonic 2 spin dash. Anyone who tells you to use the Sonic 2 style spin dash, you must listen to them. Using the original spin dash is dumb. Seriously, why can't I just go since I'm already spinning in a ball? Why do you have to wait for the screen to go all the way to the right? Sonic can also use the special peel out move. However, if you were like me and did not read the instructions of how to play, halfway through the game, you learned that you can use this ability by looking up and pressing that jump button. One of the mechanics that is arguably annoying and are praised, regardless of being called a gimmick, is uh, the time travel mechanic. Once you pass the pole, you can now travel through time. As long as you are able to go fast enough while maintaining that speed long enough to travel through time. The reviews see it as a back to the future nostalgia, or something like that, and YouTubers yell out to just have Sonic have some sort of time travel button or mechanic to go instantly. As for me, I enjoyed this because I could plan out where I was going to go, run at high speeds, and then go through time. I admit, later levels, I would be looking for springs and ways to cheat the time traveling. Yet, I enjoyed assessing the terrain, the map, the distance. I felt like I was smart for being able to go back in time by my own skills, planning, and patience. And I don't think patience is a word you want to associate with Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic... So Sonic the Hedgehog. And although it was fun to go through the levels to plan how I would travel to the past, the level designs would be confusing, stupid, and rage-inducing. Seriously, the second level was freaking confusing! The background looked like it was one of the other platforms, but it's not! <laughs> it's stupid. There's also Wacky Workbench, which is one of the worst level designs ever. Another thing in this game are the endings. If you play through the game, you can actually get two possible endings, the good ending or the bad ending. If you play straight through the game as is, you will get the bad ending by default. But if you want to get the good ending, lucky you, there are two ways to get that good ending. You can take the quicker way by playing through the game and getting the seven time stones from the special stages. 
To get into the special stages, you must reach the goal with a minimum of 50 rings, so don't lose them! Get all 7 stones and you will automatically get the good ending. The other way is slightly longer, but what you must do is go back in time and destroy these machines. There are also holograms of Metal Sonic, but you don't need to destroy those for the good future. You must do this in all Acts 1 and 2 of every zone. Seriously, this took me about 5 minutes, and other times I would reach the time limit. Oddly enough, if you didn't find a machine and you had enough lives, you can just run the timeout or com commit seppuku and start at the beginning of the time zone. I did this for like 3, maybe 4 levels. As for the music, it doesn't really matter. To me, anyway, the Japanese music is considered superior, but I just think it's good because if you listen to the present music it's and then go back in time, or into the future, it's pretty much just the same song, just a slightly different rendition, giving you a different feel depending on what uh, time period you're in. As for the American soundtrack, I was too much in the past levels to care, and even so, I didn't really pay that much attention to the music. With the exception of Metallic Machine, I love that music! Seems like I'm about to sing the game's phrases, but hold on, there are some issues that bother me. First, the level design. I already mentioned this earlier, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to mention the same thing. The level design is stupid confusing! If you were tossed into this game and found the time poles on the first level, you would think there was both past and future poles. Beat the first zone onto the second, now all you see at first are future poles. You go further into the level and now you're thinking you can only go into the future. But wait! Much later in the level is also past poles! Great! But now, you have to go back to see if the machine is back there, wasting your time! Speaking of wasting your time, please subscribe as fast as you can to prove you are the fastest Sonic that ever Sonicked. But for realsies, the level design will sometimes be forcing you backwards, making you go back to the beginning, or making you lose all the progression you just made. However, for Wacky Workbench, it's more like you're now on a bounce house you didn't even ask for. Sounds great at first, then you start to realize it's a bounce house made by Jigsaw. The levels that are even remotely good are only the past levels. But Wacky Workbench being the biggest exception because, again, a bounce house made by Jigsaw. What the heck? The good future levels are pretty good too. Also? What is this? Really? I was supposed to know that I would not get squashed dead when it looks like I would clearly get squashed dead? This is the stupidest level design ever. Okay, so maybe you could figure it out when you look at the pipe that leads to it? But with everything looking confusing and you constantly being launched everywhere... Who would be paying attention to this? My second issue with the game is the Metal Sonic battle. Okay, I will admit, I am not a veteran Sonic player. My Sonic skills suck! Playing through the boss fight, I died so many times. I admit, this part of the game is slightly annoying to me. But I ended up looking at this boss battle as a pretty interesting battle between two equal foes. Sonic can go fast, but so can Metal Sonic. Whenever Sonic was ahead, Metal Sonic would do a dash attack and take the lead. If Sonic were behind, Metal Sonic would slow down and release a discharge because he is designed to beat up Sonic. You, as Sonic, not only know Metal Sonic's two abilities, now you must make strategic plays while racing Metal Sonic to the end goal. Then Metal Sonic face plants so hard into the wall he blew himself up. Save Amy, get a hug. That was my second issue with Sonic CD, but honestly I can look past that. My third issue is when I didn't know that the hologram was not essential to getting the good ending. After Stardust Speedway and beating Metal Sonic, the holograms in the past are long gone. Whenever you destroy the holograms, the animals are jumping around the past, present, and future. So why don't they do that for the rest of the game? If not the present, then why not the past? These animals indicate whether the hologram is there or not, and since there is no more hologram, why not just have the animals jumping around? Again, this was during a time when I thought I needed to destroy the holograms too. Which leads me to my next issue, machines and holograms. Why couldn't they just imply in the instructions that the hologram was just a side quest that you chose to do on your own? And uh, that's kind of it. Nothing to cry about on that. So is this game worth all those high ratings, or does it deserve to be bashed a lot more than what the fans give it credit for? Maybe the ratings are right, I just think people need to be let known that there are still issues with the game design. The game has so many ideas, like the idea of venturing throughout the level. 
However, sometimes the level design will force you to backtrack when you wish to look around. Another idea is for you to be the hero, saving the animals because they are innocent creatures and it is the right thing to do. You are the hero because that is what Sonic does, what Nintendo don't. That was a thing. I, that was forced. I, should... <laughs> I think I'll put that in. The... <laughs> I really do recommend playing the remastered Steam version. However, as a first Sonic game to play, I kind of don't recommend it. The level will confuse you and some of the gaming concepts can and or will frustrate you. There are other stuff to unlock, but I didn't do all that. This game is good to me, but it still has its flaws. So that is my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys later, and I hope that I can keep moving at supersonic speed. Uh, I gotta stop doing that.